Hi guys and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Lab instructional video. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through today's example. Today's example is example problem 4.1, calculating heat transfer. A ionic compound with a mass of 10.525 grams was added to 50.0 milliliters of water that had an initial temperature of 24.0 degrees Celsius. How many calories were transferred if, after thoroughly mixing the solute, the water temperature increased to 27.9 degrees Celsius? Is this process exo or endothermic? All right. This is a very pretty simple heat calculation problem. Um, heat, for the most part, equals calories. Heat is a measurement. The measurement is done in calories. That's the first thing we have to understand. And there's a, you know, there's a formula for that. Heat equals uh, the mass of solution. Multiply that by the change in temperature. It's usually called delta T or change in temperature. And that's going to be multiplied by the heat capacity of water, which is 1.00 uh, calories per gram uh, degree Celsius. So now, that is the expression that we need to know that's in your book. Heat is often referred to as Q. This is often referred to as M. In your book, this is referred to as delta T and C, which is the heat capacity. Okay, that's how your book um, illustrates it. Now, let's solve the problem. First things first, we need to know the mass of solution. Okay, so we're starting out with 50 milliliters of water, and the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. So we know that there are 50.0 grams of H2O. We also know that we're adding 10.525 grams of solute. So we're adding mass to the solvent, or to the solution, I should say. To 5 grams, you add that into your calculator, you will get an answer of 60.5 grams. Don't forget, uh, when you're adding measured numbers, it's the decimal points that matter. One decimal point here versus three over here, so the final answer only has one. So this is the mass of solution. Okay, so that's what we need to know. We need to know the mass of the solution. Now, next thing we need to know is delta T, change in temperature. So, take your final temperature, which is 27.9 degrees Celsius. Subtract out the initial temperature, which is 24.0 degrees Celsius. And you should get, looks, it looks to me like 3.9 degrees. That is our change in temperature. Okay, so first we calculated the mass of solution, then we calculated the change in temperature. Now all we have to do is take our formula for Q, which is heat or calories, is mass multiplied by delta T multiplied by C, which is the heat capacity, which we wrote down right over here. Mass is 60. 0.5 grams multiplied by 3.9 degrees Celsius. We got that from here. Multiplied by the heat capacity of water, which is 1.00 calories per gram degrees Celsius. Watch the units cancel we don't want. And now we're left with the unit we do want. Grab out your calculator. Let me fire mine up here using my phone calculator. 60.5 multiplied by 3 60.5 multiplied by 3.9 equals one more time calculator messed up and then of course multiply it by 1 will be the calculator says 235.95 calories uh, we have to round it so there's three sig figs here two sig figs there and three sig figs here. So we have to round it to two significant figures. 
So that is going to be 240 calories. There's my final rounded answer. Now, there is one additional question. It wants to know, is this process exothermic or endothermic? And that's a very easy question. You look at your initial temperature, which was 24.0. You look at your final temperature, which was 27.9. If the initial temperature is lower than the final temperature, that means there's heat. Uh, the temperature got larger, it got higher as the reaction went on. That means the reaction gave up energy. It released energy to the environment. So that is an exothermic process. If it were endothermic, the solution actually would have gotten colder, much colder. Um, well, I shouldn't say much. It would get measurably colder, and that would be a, a reaction that was absorbing heat from the, from the surroundings. So that reaction that would get colder. The, the uh, solution would get colder. Okay? So that is how you do example problem 4.1. If you have any questions, please stop by for office hours or go see a tutor at the Academic Success Center. Um, just make sure you can do these kind of calculations. Uh, they are uh, pretty important as we move forward in this course. And with that, I wish you good luck and good chemistry.